Balika. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you happy that you came? So far, are you blessed? Awesome. If that's the truth in your heart, then let us celebrate Jesus one more time as we take our seats. Awesome. You can, you can have your seats. <clears throat> Great. Um, before you continue, Salimike Nisana. Salimike Nisana. Uh, Buwana Yesu asifiwe. Sawa, sawa. My name is Victor Wanjala. I'm a son in this house. <clears throat> Um, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be standing here ministering to God's people on this second day of July. Um, before I continue, I'd like to appreciate uh, three, group of people, uh, three groups of people. Um, the first one is the authority of this house, led and, uh, led, being led by Bishop Dr. Dr. Jimmy Kemani in absentia and our mom, Pastor Alice Kemani, for this opportunity. The second team that I want to um, appreciate and truly honor is the author, again the leadership of this house, the pastoral team for this opportunity. And the third group of people that I want to honor is you people. Tunge kwa naibada kama mge kuja true. Lakini because you are here, it is better, it is warmer, it is everything nice because you guys chose to come. Let us appreciate ourselves. Sawa, sawa. Um, just before we get um, into the word, by the, by the way, happy new month. I feel like saying happy new year, lakini katikati ya mwaka tutasema aje. Happy half new year. Sindio? Happy half new year. Wangapi wetu liko meset goals for this year. Tuliko to meset. Sawa, sawa. Wangapi wetu wameza ku achieve their goals. I mean, don't be shy. It's a safe space. It's a safe space. Satu takuona. Ni mimi peke promise you that na kuona. Ni wanga pietu wameza ku achieve. Also, the ones that are not lifting their hands, there is grace for the second period. Like any whatever, I mean, we say hiki to in a formula. Wherever you nafanya, whatever works for you, you do it. Sindio. The goal is living a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Sindio. So whether you're crushing your goals or not, whether you have goals or not, I mean, as long as we are living a victorious Christian life in Christ Jesus, is all that matters. Hiya, sawa, sawa. Let us get right into it. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 3, from verse, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14, all the way to 21. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14 to 21. I will request that you help me read. Sawa, sawa. Uh, let us go. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all our generations forever and ever. Amen. Um, I'm going to anchor whatever it is that I'm teaching on that scripture. Emp emphasis is going to be on, uh, on chapter 3, verse 14, that he, he will grant you according to his riches in glory to be strengthened in the inner, to be strengthened with might in the inner man. Um, before I give you the title of whatever it is that I'm teaching, let me just give you like a small story. Um, sisi tumelelewa huku and venye mnona hi place in a car that is from Ipandeote Azima Man all the way to Githerai Hadika Hawa West. A few years back, it was not the same. Um, uh, it is the gentrification that has brought it to this place because other places within he area zilikuwa ushago. 
for the most part hii pande ya huku juu this side of the road uh, ukifika Gedhorai hiyo pande yote hadi maziwa Kiamombi ilikuwa shamba ya kahawa peke yake na kulikuwa na kware huko ndani Th those were the only things that wadha ilikuwa shamba ya kahawa na kware ilikuwa tuka ushago fulani huku maziwa on this other side from um, Kiangishiri all the way to kahawa to nini Marion school just before kahawa West. pia ilikuwa some ka rural area ilikuwa no, not rural, rural area rural area but ile space yenye bado watu wanapanda mahindi kuna miti ya avocado kuna shamba za miwa huko you get the whole point so sisi mimi nimelelewa along your side um, <clears throat> we used to go swim in the rivers Nairobi kulikuwa na mtu unaweza ogelea within Nairobi so tulikuwa tunaenda kuogelea kwa mtu um uko kiangishiri just uh, katikati ya maziwa na gedhorai there was a river there alafu hiyo place yote ilikuwa shamba so one day tukitoka shule tulikuwa tunakuja nilisomea kahawa west hapa mahiga primary school so it was our custom or rather it was um our routine tulikuwa tunatoka shule tunapitia hii pande nyingine haikuwa na fun because it was only coffee this other side on the other hand ilikuwa na all the fun kwa sababu gani kulikuwa na maembe kulikuwa na machungwa kulikuwa na shamba za miwa i mean and for us who are young we know that these things are a whole big deal si ndio ulikuwa unapona mzazi 10 bob ya lunch unakula yote mae maembe lakini bado jioni unataka ingine so this is what we used to do tulikuwa tunatoka shuleni tunapitia this side ya maziwa so tunapitia kwa hizo shamba alafu tunachukua we were not stealing understand <laughs> gas na mtungia gas sawa <laughs> get the whole thing we were not stealing tulikuwa tu tunachukua without permission sawa sawa so tuliko, tuliko natoka shule so one day tumetoka shule tukapitia um, we passed through that side ya maziwa and the mangoes were ripe unaona ile the way jesus christ and the fig tree that it was so appealing that it drew him that it drew him closer only to find that there were no fruits as unlike jesus we found that there were fruits so we got to that place with, we see this shamba alafu we were like four boys so there is one that was the guard the security this one needed not to worry about um, whether they will get mangoes or not yeye haja yake ilikuwa moja wale wenye wako ndani ya shamba wasifanye nini wasishikwe and true to that that guy lived up to the whole thing like we were organized we were strategized in class 6 you cannot tell us anything please security team if you need some one two and threes on how to do this we are your guys i will call my boys so um one day we are coming from school and we see ripe mangoes um, in a certain farm but rumor had, we had been in that farm before um, nasi mara ya kwanza a couple of times and every time we were in that farm tulikuwa tunatolewa but this time it was different the mangoes were there alafu fence kidogo ile mwenye tulikuwa tumeweka ilikuwa inashinda ikizibwa but this time haijazibwa for some time and it didn't look like it was a trap for us So see we have our guy who is the security. Alafu si wengine tumeingia. In our group we had a guy called John Gomi. Uh, Ngomi was the tallest. Alafu he was a little bit slow. Um I'm not saying anything about short people. This is not us tooting our He was a little bit slow. Um sisi wengine tulikuwa tunabeba bags zilikuwa na vitabu but zilikuwa vitabu mbili ya homework na wengine ya kuonyesha mzazi that hajapotea akisema uende shule haikuwa necessarily for you si liko tu kwenye shamzazi that kijana wake anaenda shule but ngomi was different ngomi alikuwa na beba zake zote 14 textbooks encyclopedia vitabu zimejaa zimeisha ameandika zime, zote alikuwa anapanga bag like you could not carry his bag like what he did could not be achieved by mere by mere strength of men so that day ngomi and then ngomi was the tallest but he, so he was be him being the tallest he was the one that for the most part alikuwa anashinda kipanda miti so that day tukafika kwa hiyo shamba again we are not smelling anything fishy ngomi kama kawaida akapa akapanda sisi wenye tunaweza msaidia tukapanda hapa kidogo tu hapa ndio pia ukiruka ufike chini you know when you are short and you try to jump from a high place kidogo <laughs> it's a whole struggle 
Um, so ngomia kukulia juu because he's tall, he can hear as chini haraka. The distance is a little bit kidogo for him. So ya kukulia juu with his bag, wezi yeka kitu chini. Juu ta explain aje uliacha wapi vitabu na nini ukifika nyumbani bila. So ya kuko juu anachuna maembe. Sisi wenye tukuku chini pia tunamsaidia kuchuna zile zenye tunafiki. Tunafikia. Somebody else is gathering the mangoes hapo chini. So tukona the guy that was manning the fence or rather looking out for us. Umsitu alikimbia. And when you are young, the hard mentality. You don't stand to look at it. Uwe anakimbia kwa nini. Where you see people running, you run. Sindio? Na ungo me being the slowest and the tallest and him being up. Na uko hivyo juu ya mti kabisa. Yendo liko wakwanza kutoka kwa hiyo shamba. We do not understand how. Sisi wenye tuliko huko chini. Um, as we were closer to the ground. And as we were a little bit faster and swifter than him. Sisi ndo tuliko huko nyuma karibu utishiko. And this time it was dogs. Umbo ndo ziliko pia zinatukimbi. Zinatukimbisha. Munakimbisha na mwenye shamba na umbo. So the first person mwenye liko na mande git. Huyo. We didn't stop to look. Kila mtu ni ashuke eh? And then this is, you know when scripture says that they will flee in seven directions. <laughs> we came in as one team. Sisi wote tuliko tunatoka na njiazi, na njiazi to each and every person in his own way. But still, at the end, when we were, uh, now when we got to gather again, um, we got to meet again at uh, Gedhoray at Kiangishiri. So tunulizana, nani ya kawapi? So we are seeing every other person ka? Coming. I love to lizana. Ngomi ya kowapi. Ngomi ya alifika. Alisha kimbia kafika mali tuliko. Tunafua kupata. Kupata na amesimama huko. E ata alisha pumzika. Amesha pumua. And then he's laughing at us. Because zizi. Sasa tunamuliza. E Buddha. Wendo uliko huko juu. Ulifika juu kuchini wakwanza. Na ulitoka jinje wakwa. Wakwanza. And up until today. He cannot explain the whole thing. The sermon of my title. Strength in the inner man. That is the sermon, uh, the title of my sermon, sorry. The title of my sermon is Strength in the Inner Man. And from uh, the scripture that you have read, or rather from uh, that brief story, um, you see that uh, our guy, Ngomi, is able to achieve something that it was inexplicable, at least in our eyes. How is he able to achieve that? Again, you have said, we don't know. But while I was doing the preparation for, um, this, uh, for this teaching, Kidogo, it's a little bit, a little bit. I was getting closure. I mean, up until today, I've never gotten closure. Nimeanza kupata closure, Kidogo. But this one, for him, it was not him being led by the Holy Spirit, no. This was just him doing his thing. A boy being a, a boy. So let us set the foundation, Kidogo. You see, as we journey through life, we need to get stronger in that thing which is? good, right? That if um, my faith is to be effective, then my faith must continually do what? Continue to grow. True or true? Uh, that if, they say, because the same, same uh, the challenges that I'm facing today are not the challenges that I'll be facing tomorrow, right? The challenges will level up. It will be different. We say that the path of the righteous is as a shining light that does what? Grows brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. That means that it is progressive in nature. The path of the righteous is progressive in nature. So to me, if it's prog it will be either progressive towards the positive side or prog progressive towards the negative, but it is never constant. True or true? Um, uh, the, th uh, the thing is, uh, we, also, uh, we need to get stronger. Uh, we need to uh, anchor our faith. Our faith needs to get stronger. We also need to have stronger resolutions, right? the mental capacity, the fortitude to do what? To also wade through seasons of life. True or true? We also need to um, get stronger. Our love for God and Jesus Christ needs also to continue getting what? Stronger. That's life being progressive in nature. We continue to do what? To grow in this thing. We continue to increase in strength in the spaces that we're in. Or rather, or, or, sorry, in, the, in every other facet of 
in every other fa facet of life. And you see, this strength that we are talking about is opposed to being strong in our own strength, not the physical strength that we are talking about. It is something different. Because if my faith is to grow, no matter how much I hit the gym, my faith will not grow. True or true? No matter how much um, I lift weights, no matter how much I jog, no matter how much I run, again, my love for God will not do what? Will not increase. True or true? It will not get stronger. So we see that this strength, or rather increasing in this strength, is not something that is physical. It is something that is more deeper than what is physical. Remember, when you look at the, um, the body by nature, the body of man, or rather the human being in himself, is, uh, the Apostle Paul gives a very good analogy when he, when he says that though outwardly we are resting away, yet inwardly we are being done what? We are being renewed. That for us, the body, in as much as it's a good thing, um, the body, in as much as it's necessary, or rather in as much as physical exercise is necessary, it is only profitable up to a certain extent, right? But strength within the inner man is profitable for the whole journey, for the long run. Sawa, sawa? And we can see um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Give us 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. For physical training is for some value, but godliness, spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way, since it, since it holds a promise for the present life and for the life to come. Spiritual exercise holds a promise for the present, the, what is in the here and now, and also what is to come, that after we are done in this space that we are in, what is to come also for uh, spiritual exercise, or rather spiritual growth for the next life, it will also be done, it will also be what? It will also be profitable. And therefore it begs the question, what is the source of this strength? Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 says that you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in that is the source. That you therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace that is in, is in Christ Jesus. And you see that Paul's instruction is also specific as to where he should do what? He should draw this strength or rather this grace from. It is in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And, to, and when he's saying that uh, draw this from uh, the grace that is in Christ Jesus, it means that there are other sources also of strength. Are there other sources of uh, strength also profitable? Yes, they could be, but to a certain extent. True or true? Um, let us read, um, uh, let us do a comparison then. Let us do a comparison of this source that we are being told and the other so and the other sources. Uh, let us look at uh, Psalms chapter 18, verse 29. Psalms chapter 18, verse 29. It says, for by one I can run against a troop, but by my God I can leap over a wall. It says, by one I can run against a troop. And you remember the story of David. Uh, when you read the book of Samuel, it gives the, uh, the story of the achievements or rather the successes that, this guy ha that these guys had in battle and in, um, in life while they were running also away from Saul and building themselves up to the army that they became to be. Now, when you read now towards the last, uh, towards the end of the book of Samuel, I think it's first or second, um, when he's talking about, now these were the mighty men of David. And when you read about the mighty men of David, these guys were able to do exploits. You see, when he says, by one, I can run against a troop. There is one man among the mighty men of David. This guy, Aliamka, akaenda into the enemy's camp, akachotea mkumaji na akamletea. The enemy's camp, one man, single-handedly did that. Um, there, there's another man, again, among the mighty men of David that went to battle. One man. Na kila mtu mwenye likuwa hapo and he came back again victorious. That is one man. So when David is saying that by one man, I, will, I can run against a troop. He's saying that this thing is 
very possible because we had uh, again in the mighty men of David there is again one man that went to war and I think he smote over 800 people just by himself so much so that the sword that he was having ilikatalia kwa mkono kwa sababu ilikuwa imeja damu jemvenya meshikilia ilikuwa imeja damu ikakatalia kwa mkono that is just the um, that is an accomplishment of one man. So he says that by one man, I can run against a troop. And you see, when you are going toward, there is strategy first. There is proper planning. He says, which, uh, which king, when he's saying that, uh, when scripture is talking about counting the cost, it asks, which king, before going to war, does not sit down and do what? And number his troops and see whether he will be able to win by many or by few. There is planning involved, right? But look at what David says on the second part of that, that by my God, I can do what? Leap over a wall. And you see, leaping is almost effortless. Ukiona um, a sewage, amtarutu kadogo, you don't think about it so much, right? You just do what? You just leap over it because there is no effort that is required. That is the comparison. That is one of the comparisons that David is saying. That by, um, by my troop, I can run, uh, by one man, I can run against a troop. But with my God, it is almost effortless. That with strength that is coming, not from the physical. Remember, him running against the troop is something that is physical, right? But by the strength that is supplied, not by anything physical, but everything spiritual. That is by God. I can do what? I can leap over a wall. And if you look, uh, and if you go back into the times that these guys were living in, these walls were not something small. These things were very huge because it covered the whole city. And you can tell for, uh, for those of us that love maybe epic content things up, Kitambu, you can see that they will be able to tell whether the enemy is coming when they were a few days away. You'll, uh, you'll, hear, uh, you'll hear them saying that in two nights, we'll have reached the city walls in two nights. And you see, so to mean that if it is something that will be seen when you are two nights away, or rather two days away, to uh, reaching that place, it means that this wall, this wall was so these walls were so huge. Um, if the armies in, within the city will, uh, were preparing for war, they will see the enemy coming from a very, very long distance. So to mean that they will not be caught off guard. And you see the enemy coming from a long distance. It means that unamoneambali. And you have some time to, to do what? To prepare. If they're saying that the enemy will be at our walls by daybreak, that means that maybe they had the whole night to do what? To prepare. That means that the walls were not something small. These walls were very huge. But look at what David says, that by my God, I can almost effortlessly go over that wall. I will just leap over the wall. The other example is Psalms chapter 20, verse 6 to 8. Uh, let us read Psalms chapter 20, verse 6 to 8. It says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from there, from his holy heaven, with the saving strength of his right hand. Uh, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember and trust in the name of our Lord. Again, uh, they have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stood upright. That's another example when you're comparing this kind of strength, the strength that can be drawn from other sources, and this one which Paul is telling Timothy now, this specific strength, I want you to draw it from the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That, whatever it is that David is saying, that they will put their hopes, uh, their trust in chariots, they will put their trust in horses, but we, we know something that is sustainable in the long run. We know something that will be beneficial in the long run. We know something that we can still hold on to for the long run, something that will not fail. And what is that? It is putting their trust or rather their strength in, drawing their strength from the name of the Lord. And the story of Gideon also is also another example. Um, you remember before going to war, he's given, uh, he selects men, a very good number of men. And then God is like, oh, no, you know what? You need, to cut it. you need to cut it to size to fit just a small, I just want a small group. And there was nothing that they did. Why? Because the arm of the Lord was with them. The prophet Anna, uh, sorry, not the prophet, uh, Anna, the mother of Samuel, when she's praying, um, or rather when she's giving thanks in First Samuel chapter 2, verse 9, he says that, by the arm of flesh, 
can no man prevail. That yes, you can try. You can advance. Ah, yes. He will guard the feast of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength no man shall prevail. That by, strength that, uh, that by the strength that is not of God, that if we have not yet built ourselves in the inner man, whatever strength we have, yes, it will be good. Yes, it will take us to a certain level. But if I am to prevail in the here and now, and also in the by and by, I need something bigger than the physical strength that I'm leaning in, or any other source of strength that I I'm leaning in. The story again of David and Goliath is a very good example. He's saying, uh, we are seeing this mighty man and we are seeing this Kasmolka boy and this Kasmolka boy is able to do the most on the mighty man and is also able to boast over him. And so from the above scriptures, you can see that though we can obtain strength from every other source, from any other sources, strength that is found in Christ Jesus is more sustainable and more dependable for what? For the long haul. I want to answer a second question is, how do I obtain now this strength that we are talking about? Where does this, uh, how can this strength come? Or rather, how can I be a partaker of this strength? You're going to read from the book of Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4, it is a prophecy. Uh, it's a vision, sorry, rather. It's a vision uh, that, this, that he saw. It says, now the angel of the Lord who talked with me came back and, and wakened me as a man who was wakened out of his sleep. He says, and he said to me, what do, uh, what do you see? So I said, I am, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And, the stand, and on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one, at the right, uh, one of the right of the bowl and the other on its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, what are these, my lord? Then the, angel, uh, then the angel who talked, who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No. And I said, No, my Lord. Let us read together. So he answered and said to me, So this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Again, let us repeat. So, this, uh, th so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by what? Says who? Again, how do I obtain this strength? It is through the Holy Spirit. That is where this strength is coming from. If my inner man is to be strengthened, then this strength can only come from? The Holy, from the Holy Spirit. You see, Christ, when he's ascending, he says, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will do what? I will come to you, right? And he coming to us is through the Holy Spirit abiding in us, us receiving the promise of God, the gift of God, which is the Holy Spirit. So you obtain this strength by virtue of the Holy Spirit dwelling in, dwelling in us. And what are the, uh, the characteristics of this? And you see, when you, are, when you read that vision again, when you read that an in-depth uh, analysis of that vision, you'll see that um, there were olive trees that were continuing to do what? Pour oil on the lamps that and this oil was not running out it was it was just there in and kumogika in and lake ifanya nini ikiongezeka for the supply that was needed in that time and even like it was in abundance that the, the oil was being poured in abundance and that is one of the characteristics that this spirit the holy spirit that we are talking about has been poured out to us without measure true that God is not holding back on what he is giving. Luke chapter 11 verse 9. Luke chapter 11 verse 9 gives a good picture of the same. Um, that God is not holding back on what he is giving us. So he says, so I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who, uh, for everyone who keeps on asking persistently receives and who keeps on seeking persistently finds and who, and him who keeps on knocking persistently the doors will be opened what uh, what father among you if his son asked for fish will give him a snake instead of a fish next verse or if he asked for a or if he asked for an egg will give him a scorpion i want us to read this together if you then being evil come on if you then being evil, that is, 
know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who do what? Again, let us repeat. If you then... Thank you. Now this is God being the tap that never stops giving. True or true? That he has given us the criteria, rather this is one of the characteristics of this Holy Spirit, that how much more is he willing to give us to those who do what? To those who ask. Because like the olive trees that were, uh, were by the lampstand in the vision in Zechariah chapter, uh, chapter 4, he says that they were continually pouring out oil on the bulls, Cindy, on the lampstand that were burning, and this oil never ran out. It's the same thing with the Spirit of the Lord, that He's continually giving it to us. If we are to obtain strength, um, if we are obtaining strength through the Holy Spirit, understand that the Holy Spirit has already been given without what? Without measure. Question number three How do I sustain this strength? Now that we have seen where the source of this strength is, we've said that the source of this strength is. In Christ Jesus, right? We have seen the way to obtain this strength is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, and while we are still there, um, First John chapter 4 verse 4 says that you now, dear children, are of God and have done what? Let us read. You are of God, little children, and have done what? Because is Again, let us read that Pamoja. Be because he who is in you is greater than who is in the world. So we see that again, that's another characteristic. Sorry, that's another characteristic of the Holy Spirit. That it doesn't matter who is in the world. The one that you have received is the real deal. He says, there are others that are in the world. There are other sources, again, as we have seen in this world. We have seen there are other sources of strength. But the one that you have received is greater than each and every other source that you're getting your strength from. Again, in, uh, in the same, same book, First John chapter 5, verse 4, he says that, now you, dear children, uh, sorry, no, sorry, for whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith. The next verse. Verse Who is he that overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You see that this is where it's at for us. The deal is in Jesus Christ. Now question number three. How do we sustain this strength? Um, John chapter 15 from verse 4 to 8. We were taught beautifully during the midweek services by the come unahatanga midweek unahatanga like there's a whole treat in it. If you do not come for our midweek services, woo, okay, so, so, you miss. So uh, John chapter 15, verse 4 to 8 says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you do what? Continue. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me, continue. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and, by, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. You see, that the way sorry, if you abide in me, sorry and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. The last verse. By this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. How do I sustain the strength? Number one is by me abiding in God. Me choosing to stay in this space each and every day of my life. Me choosing to continually receive from this olive tree that is continually pouring out the oil to do what? To keep the fire burning. It is me choosing deliberately saying that God, I am here right now, today, tomorrow, and forever. That yes, while there might be every other source, the only way to maintain, or rather to sustain this source of strength is by me abiding in. Because God can only be finisher of anything that he started. 
the rest unamwachia tu hapo pia anaiangalia anashindwa imetoka wapi na nzi wapi inaenda wa inaenda wapi but anything that he has started ah you can be certain that he is able to see it all the way to completion to its end why because this is his job like the way he tells Zerubbabel not by might not by power remember that when they were building that wall there were enemies the enemies that were against them were so strong the people that were with them again so weak because they did not have the numbers they did not have anything it had only it only had to be by the spirit of god that by the hand of god and the hand of god alone so me choosing to abide or rather me wanting to sustain this strength can only be done as long as i'm within the fold as long as i'm abiding continually in the presence of god colossians chapter 2 uh, from verse 6 7 says that now as you therefore have received jesus christ continue to do what therefore as you have received christ jesus the lord walk in union with him reflecting his character in the things you do and say living lives that lead others away from sin having been deeply rooted in him and now being continually built up in him and becoming increasingly more established in your faith just as you are taught and overflowing in it with gratitude you see that the criteria is in him that for me to sustain this strength or rather for it to be effective in my life i have to continually lean in and trust what and to trust in the name of the lord or rather to continue to lean in and to trust in the grace that has been made available for me at the revelation of jesus christ and um, the other thing is just resting fully on grace for me to be able to sustain this strength i have to continually rest fully on grace again peter gives again a very good um a very good word of uh, exhortation to uh, the, in his epistle when he says that uh, in first peter chapter 1 verse 13 he says that be uh, therefore guard up the loins of your mind be sober and do what rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of jesus christ again let us read that part and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of who so we are resting our nini fully we are resting fully on grace and what is grace we understand that grace is the free and undeserved favor given by or rather grace is also unmerited assistance given to humans for their regeneration and sanctification or rather divine assistance to do what to resist sin you remember the things that we had said when we are setting the background for this that if i am uh, for that given that the life of a believer is continual if i am to increase in faith right if i am to have a stronger resolution if my love for god and christ must increase then this is the space in which it will do us it will increase i must continue resting fully on grace and now on to the last question how does uh, how do i exercise this strength how do i exercise this strength um uh, through scripture you'll see um or rather let me quote uh, is it proverbs chapter 24 yeah proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 that says that if you faint in the day of adversity then what was small if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small right so to mean that there are days that shall be coming in our way that will be a little bit overwhelming to us and remember the uh, the goal as we, uh, as we said earlier is to grow stronger in our faith to grow stronger in our resolution to grow and in our fortitude um and also to grow to increase in the love of god and jesus christ so if i get to a place that i am not growing in these areas then it means my strength is what if there be challenges in life that are drawing me away from god kidogo it means that i need to do what to exercise more in the inner man now the strength that in the inner man that has been supplied through who uh, the holy spirit that has been given to us i need to continually put him into exercise for him to also do what be profitable to me remember again the way paul says that though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed that the inner man is continually like the way we say that is aging like fine wine the body inenda ikienda hivi for the inner man it's the other way around because um the inner man uh, he gets better by the number of years that we are around the number of, of the things that we are 
experiencing the grace that you are continuing uh, that is going for continually being done what being poured to us that is the place where the inner man is continually growing so it doesn't get to a point at yana rudina uko nyuma no his is continually with uh, is you his is continual with time he continues to do what to increase uh, so if i am to exercise uh, the thing is uh, if i am to exercise this strength then there are things that i must i must do um remember again paul gives a very good um uh, description of the battles that we are facing he says that we do what we do not wrestle against flesh and but against what ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 kindly finally brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might oh sorry Ephesians chapter yeah 6 verse 10 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might next verse put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wells of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in what this is what we are up eh? with this is what we are up against and again in second corinthians chapter two uh second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 to uh, from verse 3 sorry yeah for though we walk in the flesh we do not walk according to the continue for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god to the pulling down of strongholds casting uh casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity and obedience of and being ready to punish all disobedience when all when your obedience has been fulfilled that this is that we are up uh, this is what we are up against um the, these other sources of strength can only go so far but then again as we said if i am to win over these battles it means that i have to have something that is bigger than what is physical because if, if he says that other weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty to they're doing what pulling down of strongholds how do you demolish an argument by um lifting weights not at all it is through what something bigger than what can be seen it is through me building myself up in the most holy faith now this is me exercise how oh, sorry how do i exercise now this strength this strength that does come again for us passively there is a me part to play there is something that i must do to continually do what to continually build this person up one of these things is through constant and consistent fellowship with who the holy spirit me allowing the holy spirit each and every day to do what to lead and to guide me and to do what to instruct me true or true it is me again sitting my uh, sitting down uh, sitting down and submitting myself to god and to his word it is um me sorry it is me putting on now the full armor of god according to what he has said again in uh, in ephesians chapter 6 uh, verse 10 it is me putting uh, putting on the full armor of god that i may be able to do what put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to do what to stand against the wiles of the devil verse 12 for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the principalities powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places the next verse therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to do what that you are able to withstand um if for us that were fans of wrestling or rather for us that like um sports kama boxing karate uh mixed martial arts you will see that before you get into the or rather before you start fighting you have to do what assume a stance right what does that do or rather what uh what is the necessity of that so that when you are being hit if i'm coming to fight and i'm standing like this if you hit me whatever direction you are, you are swinging from i will go to that direction immediately at us they will it will be effortless but if i assume a stance then it means that you might hit me yes but i will not fall down true or true you might hit me again not even once but a number of times but i will not fall down that is me doing what being able to withstand the blows that i'm that are coming and after i've been able to withstand the blows i'm still standing i am still doing what 
I'm still standing, that I'm not gone, I, it is no, I'm not finished, I'm still being able to do what? To stand. Either to stand for the fight to end or rather to stand to continue doing what? To continue also throwing fight or rather to fight back the person that is fighting me. So he says, uh, verse 13 again, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13, let us continue. He says, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, let us continue. Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is now Paul giving us a criteria on how to exercise this strength. Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Next verse. And having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So how am I able to, ex uh, how would I be able to exercise this strength? It is by putting on the full armor of that is the only way that I'll be able to exercise this strength. If I am to continue to grow, if my either if I'm continue to if I am to continue to obtain strength in the inner man, if the if the Holy Spirit is to continue to be, it will continue to be effective in my life. Then I have to do what exercise my spiritual muscle, get to this place that I'm able to do what to stand and to withstand by putting on the full armor of God. That means the belt of truth, uh, breastplate of righteousness, um, feet that are, should, uh, that are done what, are fitted with the message of peace, uh, the word of God, uh, the shield of faith that I'm swinging on each, and, on each and every other side of my life, that when the enemy is coming from one side, I am turning and I am putting on my shield of faith, that it is so firm in God, so much so that it does not matter what is happening, we know what the Lord has said, the way we have said in the uh, the way that we have sung in this place, so does his word. It shall not return to him empty. That is our confidence, and we are resting fully on that. That by faith, because he has said, though right now it might not look like it, but because you have said, I know it shall come to do what? It shall come to pass. That it will not be, uh, it cannot fail. That we are resting our confidence fully on this. That our God has been tried. Our God has been tested. And guess what? Guess what he has not done? He has not failed before, today, and even in the future. And for, if the, for the last 2,000 years that um, we know have existed, if he has not failed for that period, isn't this somebody that you'll want to trust? So, and this in turn, now having exercised uh, the spirit, uh, having exercised now this strength, now growing it into the, uh, growing it so much, it gets me to this place that we are, uh, we want to go back to. In this place where David was, that he says that uh, in Psalms chapter 18, verse 29, that by my, uh, by one man I can advance against a troop, but by my God, it brings us to that place, but my, by my God I can do what? that I'm going through life almost effortlessly. By who? But that comes from a place of me exercising what? The strength of in the inner man, right? And Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7, as we conclude, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7, he says, Where are you, O great, uh, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and you shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it says that, who are you, O mountain, again before Zerubbabel? Uh, that is the place again that we are getting into. That after I have exercised, now that uh, strength in the inner man, I'm getting to this place where whatever it is that is coming my way, I only have one question. Who are you, O great mountain, before Anjala? Who are you, O great mountain, before? Put your name inside there. If, is it um, that sickness? No, Lisa, too, who are you, O sickness, before? Who are you, O lack of finances, before? Who are you, O tough economic times, before? This brings us to this place that we are now certain. We know that we know that as long as I have God, I am. As long as my inner man is built up, I am. For days. If it's anxiety, you're asking yourself then again, who are you anxiety, before? 
Zerubbabel, you shall be cast down. You shall become like a molehill. And I love the way um, uh, the comparisons that he's giving, or rather, yeah, the comparisons that he's giving. For a wall, he says, he leaps over. For a mountain, it becomes a molehill. And if you know a molehill, Foucault, something small. You unai kanyanganga pia hivi alafu inapotea kabisa. Or ukipita kama umekasirika hiyo siku, unafanyanga hivi mgu, alafu it is swept. Evil. Hakuna kitu inabaki yapo. It is nothing big. So he says that in turn, if I am leaning on the strength that has been supplied for, uh, that has been uh, given unto me according to Ephesians chapter uh, 3 verse 14. Um, if I am leaning on this strength again, this in turn becomes the outcome of everything that is happening in my life that i am not uh, for this reason i uh, sorry uh, verse 16 16 ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 it says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through in there it brings me to that place where now i know that as long as i'm with god i am I am sorted. Sawa sawa. I want us to sing a song as I usher the person that will be taking us into the next session. Um, and the song goes like, you'll help me sing. We unie leze jemte ule ulivyo nanguvu umepe wa uwezo kwa roho wa mungu Usife moyo mteule ufalme ni wako umrithi pamoja na Yesu unieleze jemteule ulivyo na nguvu umepewa uwezo kwa roho wa Mungu Usife moyo mteule ufalme ni wako umrithi pamoja na Yesu inuka inuka jitie nguvu simama umshindi Kibali Msaidizi wako Ndani yako Inuka Inuka Inuka